The fifth annual Carmel Fine Art and Music Festival took place recently in Niagara Falls that showcased a wide variety of artists from across the province. This is the fifth annual one, and we're at our new location, Fireman's Park. The firemen have been absolutely wonderful in helping us out and volunteering, and we're here all weekend. We have over 60 artists and almost 20 musicians, a kid's zone, a kid's art zone. It's wonderful. Bring your kids down. We also have art installations, some food trucks. It's a great opportunity to meet some new artists, some more experienced artists. We're excited. And what is your hopes that people are going to get from this festival this weekend? I think it's multifaceted. We want new artists to have the opportunity. They can rent the booths for a fairly inexpensive price and I think that encourages people to get out there. They've been doing art for quite a while but they've never done a show. We have some brand new artists. We have some experienced artists, 40, 50 years. So we want that component of it, the art, and the other component is the music. And we really believe that artists and musicians should be paid for their work and that is one of our goals is to ensure that they're paid for their work. So Kathy, tell me about your art. My art is uh, mainly acrylics now, some watercolors, but I consider it very intuitive. So I call it from soul to hand. It's the feelings in the moment. It's um, sometimes struggling with the paintbrush, but sometimes the paintbrush and the water and the paint does exactly what I want it to. So being soul from hand, I don't like to tell the whole story. I like the viewer to come in, look at the pieces of the art. And, uh, and incorporate their own story with it. It's very abstract, and uh, color is important to me. And uh, with each color, with each painting, um, it, it tells a different story that the viewer will interpret and bring to their own lifestyle. Back, so tell me about your art. I start with sheets of aluminum, then I use power tools like angle grinders to grind all the shapes into the aluminum first. Then I use transparent colors mixed into chemicals to adhere to the aluminum. And then I top it off with a clear coat, the same automotive clear coat that you would put on cars. And what that allows is all the light to penetrate through the colors and bounce off the metals, and that's what creates this vibrant effect. So lighting is a very key part of my artwork. What does this festival mean to you as a participant? Oh, I'm so glad this festival is back because it is visual art and music and poetry reading and trying to showcase all the arts, and I really like that it's Niagara Showcase that's, that's running it, um, is celebrating the arts. And I come from Milton, but I do a lot of my art in the Niagara area because I find the Niagara area is very nurturing for especially visual arts. I mean, that's what I'm familiar with. So um, I think this festival reflects that. Kim, tell me about your involvement in the festival today. You have this amazing new book that you're uh, talking about. Yeah, uh, Skinheads, Fur Traders and DJs, An Adventure Through the 1970s. It came out this past week. I'm, I'm incredibly proud of it. Uh, it's the story of my arrival in Canada. It begins with me as a teenager in the discotheques of London, and I get hired by the Hudson's Bay Company, believe it or not, who still had their head office in London in 73. And they fly me to Eskimo Point, Northwest Territories, and drop me in, population 750 people. I help run the trading post. I live with the Inuit for a year, buying furs, stocking shelves, mopping <laughs> floors. And uh, it was a wild time, it changed my life. What does this festival mean to you as an artist to actually come and uh, be part of the Niagara community? Well, it's a matter of me also changing hats as well. Um, first of all, just emceeing here and helping out and introducing all the artists is incredible because I get to meet the artists, whether it's spoken word, whether it's musicians, whether it's fine art. And being the new guy, it's like a crash course on what's going on in Niagara. So that's brilliant. Second of all, when I change hats and become the artist, I'm in their community. Uh, I'm the guy trying to you know, promote my book, talk about it all, um, and just tell people this is what's going on with me and with all these other artists as well, and I'm proud to be part of that community. Community is really important in Niagara Falls. We, I think we are a small net community, even though we are a worldwide destination. And community in the sense that we support each other. We all have our gifts and talents, artists, musicians, organizers like me. I can't, I'm not an artist, I can't do that. But if we all come together, it is a community and people learn how to trust each other and benefit from each other as well. Over 60 artists of all ages took part in the three-day festival, which shows that art and creativity has no boundaries. In Niagara Falls, reporting for The Source, I'm Lori Taraba.